Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So, It Is Well. Today, I'm going to talk to you about Uthoff's phenomenon, what it is, how it recently affected me, how to prevent it, and how you can deal with it if it happens to you. I'm coming to you today from my hammock as I wanted to share with you how recently I experienced Uthoff's phenomenon and the importance of listening to our bodies and rest when we need to. But it's harder than it looks. Uthoff's phenomenon is also called Uthoff's sign or Uthoff's syndrome and it affects 60 to 70 percent of all MS patients. It's basically a worsening of existing symptoms due to an increase in core body temperature. Wilhelm Uthoff, a German ophthalmologist, first described exercise-induced amblyopia, lazy eye, in 1890, and in 1961, this phenomenon was given his surname. It's a temporary worsening of neurological function in MS patients and some other disorders. When we get overheated, our core temperature increases and sometimes our symptoms can increase too. Just a small change in core temperature can have a large effect. Some studies have shown that as little as 0.5 degrees centigrade or 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit can cause Uthoff's phenomenon. Sometimes it's hard being hot. <laughs> in fact, doctors used to use the hot bath test to help diagnose MS. Can you imagine? They used to use it up until 1983. You'd have to go to the doctors, get in a hot bath to see if your symptoms got worse. I'm so glad they don't do that test anymore. Don't get me wrong, I like a good soak in a nice bath, but not in the doctor's office and not to try to make myself feel worse. What can cause our core temperatures to rise? Being exposed to heat outside, exercise, eating a hot meal, smoking, stress, fevers, even our menstrual cycles. It's fun being a girl. So what happens? We're not 100% sure, but the theory is that it causes a decrease in the speed of action potentials in the central nervous system. Heat may increase the time when voltage-gated sodium channels are inactivated, which delays further action potentials. This is worsened by the demyelination caused by MS. Other theories have considered the role of heat shock proteins in the changes to blood flow. Hmm. So basically, our damaged nerves don't work so well when they get overheated. They slow down and our symptoms can flare because of it. Typically, it's short-lived, and once we cool ourselves down a bit, the symptoms subside. But it's different for each person, just like MS is different for each person. Like our parents told us when we were growing up, we're all special. For me, I tend to get an increase in symptoms in my left leg and foot. And when I'm exercising, the more aerobic I get and the more impact I put on my feet, the worse it can get. It can feel like there's blisters on the bottom of my foot and my leg can become more numb and start to spasm. This is my indication to slow down and cool off. These symptoms typically resolve in a few hours or overnight. Sometimes though, I can get hit with a wave of fatigue if I'm outside too long in the heat, which I did recently. I went to an outside event on a really hot evening and thought I had adequately prepared. I made sure I was hydrated, I wore my cooling towel, I sat in the shade, I sipped a cool beverage, and I didn't stay too long, or so I thought. The next day, I was completely wiped out. A wall of fatigue hit me and I had no choice but to rest for the day. Sometimes listening to my body and resting is hard for me. Does that happen to you too? Drop me a note in the comments below if it does. Lesson learned. I need to be more careful about going to events on hot days or not go at all. But FOMO, the fear of missing out is real. I don't want to miss out on the fun. So what can we do about it? The biggest thing to do is to be prepared ahead of time and avoid things that may overheat us. Avoid saunas, hot baths, hot tubs, and hot days. Be mindful of eating hot foods and beverages too fast and don't smoke. Prepare ahead of time. 
If we know we're going to be in a situation that may cause us to overheat, use cooling towels or cooling vests, sip cold water frequently. I use this thermos and it keeps ice cold water really cold for an amazing amount of time, even overnight. Seek out cooler locations such as the shade or look for air conditioning places to step into to cool down. I will put links in the description below to these items if you'd like to check them out. I also did a video on heat and tips to deal with it and I'll put the link up above and also in the description below if you'd like to check that out. If you do get overheated, try not to worry about the increased symptoms as they typically subside once you cool down. But if you have new symptoms or any concerns about your symptoms at all, please reach out to your neurologist or your MS nurse. A nice cool shower or bath can be helpful too, but some experience spasticity if the water's too cold. Doctors used to recommend not exercising and doing extensive regular rest periods to keep symptoms at bay, but they now know that exercise is key to keeping healthy in long-term good outcomes. They now know that UTAS phenomenon is temporary and does not cause increased risks for long-term damage or new damage to our central nervous systems. In fact, exercise is very beneficial for MS patients. Keeping in good physical shape reduces the risk for falls, long-term disability, and risks for other comorbid conditions. It's also very beneficial for neuroplasticity and may help our brains and central nervous systems reroute and get around our damaged nerves. So keep moving. The question of the day is, how do you keep from overheating? Share your tips and tricks below. If you like content about living well with chronic illness that includes information on diet, lifestyle, and occasionally my opinions, please don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bells. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, the icon under the video. Until next time, be well.